Hey guys, hope everyone's doing well and is safe. For the people who are new here, I'm Dr. Andrea and I make medicine videos and try to post new videos every week. So this week, we will discuss arterial blood gas. So, what is an arterial blood gas? It's a test that measures oxygen and carbon dioxide levels in your blood. It also measures your body's acid base level or in simple words, the pH. This pH is usually in a normal range in a healthy body. So to take an ABG, we require a small volume of blood to be drawn from the radial artery. But sometimes the femoral artery in the groin or any other site is used. So this is what an ABG strip looks like. I'm sure all of you have seen this at some point in your life. It has a lot of small details written on it. Some cases that present to the ER are so critical that we definitely need to train ourselves to analyze and treat as soon as possible. Starting with, let's see what the normal values of an ABG is. The normal value of pH is between 7.35 to 7.45. So anything less than 7.35 is acidotic and more than 7.45 is alkalotic. The normal value of carbon dioxide is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. Very easy to remember because pH is 7.35 to 7.45, whereas carbon dioxide is 35 to 45. The normal oxygen value is 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury and bicarbonate is 22 to 26 milliequivalents per liter. Sometimes, in certain exams and other countries, like UK, the carbon dioxide and oxygen values may be given in kilopascals. So, in kilopascals, the normal carbon dioxide is between 4.5 to 6, and oxygen is between 10.6 to 13.3. So for the ease of discussing this lecture, I will be uh, speaking only about the millimeters of mercury, but I'll be putting the kilopascals in brackets. Okay, so it's extremely important for you to memorize these values. So pause it for a second and go through it two, three times. And if anybody wakes you up from your sleep also, you should be able to tell them these values. So once these are memorized, understanding ABG is like a breeze. So basically, there's this golden rule, okay? More CO2 means acid. That means more the CO2, more acidotic the body is. Whereas more bicarbonate means base. That means more bicarbonate, the more basic the body is. This is the golden rule. So similarly, less CO2 means base and less HCO3 or bicarbonate means acid. So always remember this as well. So these two things you have to memorize and you have to keep it in your mind if you want to do ABG fast. So how do we approach reading an ABG strip? So I have a foolproof four-step method that works every time, but the sequence is very important. So number one, check the oxygen level. Number two, check the pH. Number three, check the carbon dioxide, and lastly, number four, check the bicarbonate. So let's apply this to a sample. So here it is. Starting with my step one, we look at the oxygen and it is 52.5 millimeters of mercury, which is much lesser than the normal. So this patient is hypoxic. He's in some form of respiratory failure. It could be type one or type two. Uh, he's got a pH of 7.29, which is in the acidotic range. He's got a carbon dioxide concentration of 68 millimeters of mercury, which is way too high, and a bicarb of 26 milliequivalents per liter. So he's hypoxic, he's got acidosis, and when we look at the carbon dioxide, it's high. So like I said, more carbon dioxide, more acid. So this is a case of respiratory acidosis. So 
let me quickly bring the concept of compensated partial compensation and uncompensated right here this is the miracle of human body and this is as interesting as biochem gets because biochem is boring in human body our body always tries to maintain an equilibrium so a high carbon dioxide value is compensated by increased bicarb ex- secretion by our kidney and a high bicarb value is compensated by increased carbon dioxide in other words acidosis is compensated by alkalinizing and alkalosis is compensated by increasing the acidotic component isn't that brilliant so now let's see our values for an instance in this case the ph is clearly acidotic the carbon dioxide is increased patient's hypoxic but the bicarb is normal high normal but nonetheless normal so this is a case of uncompensated respiratory acidosis why uncompensated because the ph is still in the acidotic range and the bicarb is also normal so it's not compensated it by getting out of its normal level so now let's change the values a little bit here look at this here so here the oxygen is still the same at 52.5 mm of mercury the ph is a uh, slightly more increased to say 7.30 mm of mercury and then the carbon dioxide is at 68 mm of mercury and bicarb is 30 mL per liter so so here the ph is still acidotic but bicarb which is alkaline has in, uh, the production of bicarb which is alkaline has increased to try and neutralize the respiratory acidotic component by increasing the alkalinity i hope that's understandable so here the bi- the body has increased the bicarb level so that it can neutralize the acidotic component of the respira- respiration part so here it's partially compensated respiratory acidosis why partial because ph is still in the acidotic range so now keeping the same example if we were to change the values a bit if the ph was 7.35 and bicarb slightly more increased say to 32 mL per liter here the ph is in a normal range but carbon dioxide is increased and so has the bicarbonate this is called compensated respiratory acidosis here it's successfully compensated because the ph is in the normal range that is 7.35 so let's discuss base excess and deficit really quickly so in an abg strip very often base excess is mentioned it's simply an indicator of the metabolic component so the normal base excess is between minus 2 to min a uh, to plus 2 so the more positive it becomes that that means the more positive beyond plus 2 it becomes it is metabolic alkalosis and the more negative it becomes that is base deficit it is in metabolic acidosis so sometimes the term base deficit is not used at all in fact they just mention base excess just remember the more positive it is the more alkaline it is the more negative it is the more acidotic it is okay so base excess or deficit in other words checks if there's an excess base or less basic component in the body so its use in abg is controversial but uh, this much information about it so let's discuss some important causes of metabolic acidosis and alkalosis and also respiratory acidosis and alkalosis starting with metabolic acidosis i have a simple mnemonic to remember metabolic acidosis So if you are a healthcare professionals you're going to tell yourself i am aid okay you are an aid to people so i am aid which stands for isoniazid aspirin metformin alcohol iron and digoxin so excess of all of this causes metabolic acidosis so what happens when our body is in metabolic acidosis we compensate it by hyperventilation why because during hyperventilation we blow off excess carbon dioxide which is also an acid component of our body so now coming to metabolic alkalosis so 
metabolic alkalosis can happen in any condition that leads to an increase in bicarb or loss of acids in the form of H plus ions. That occurs in vomiting, AC inhibitor use and NACADs and diuretics, hypovolemia, hypokalemia and secondary hypoparathyroidism. So what do what does our body do to compensate this is that the rate and depth of respiration are decreased because in a case of metabolic alkalosis we're trying to make our body more acidotic so the rate and depth of respiration are decreased in order to retain the carbon dioxide. So now coming to a respiratory acidosis. So this is any condition that causes inadequate ventilation like benzodiazepines or use of OCPs, a patient of COPD, asthma, pneumothorax, hemothorax, or ascites. Uh, like benzodiazepines and COPD. In COPD, there is a tubular chest, so the chest expansion is decreased. So that can cause respiratory acidosis. That can cause increased carbon dioxide. Benzodiazepines can decrease muscle movement. So that can cause respiratory acidosis. So this is compensated by the kidneys by increasing bicarbonate. So lastly, respiratory alkalosis, there are two very important causes. One is pulmonary embolism and another one is a panic attack. And believe it or not, both of them present very similarly. So the difference between pulmonary embolism and panic attack is that in pulmonary embolism, both the oxygen and the carbon dioxide level are decreased. Whereas in panic attack, the PaO2 is normal, but only the PCO2 is decreased. So... What do we do in case of a panic attack? Since it's a respiratory alkalosis case, we want the carbon dioxide to increase in his chest so that the acid component returns. So we make the person rebreathe into a bag. That means he's breathing in his own carbon dioxide. So basically, respiratory alkalosis happens in any condition causing hyperventilation. So a third condition which causes respiratory alkalosis is increased mechanical ventilation. So people on mechanical ventilators sometimes are given too much oxygen. So the treatment of this would just be to decrease the mechanical ventilation. So now let's do a few questions to practice what we've learned. So I'll put the values there and wait for about 10 seconds before I answer the question myself. So if you need more time, just pause the video till you figure it out. And with practice, you will get quicker. So don't worry about it if you have to pause. Okay, so here's the question. So I want you to look at it and figure out what the problem with the gases is, uh, what could be the possible cause, and what can we do? Okay, your time starts now. Okay, so this is a simple one. It is just metabolic acidosis. So there's a decrease in pH, a decrease in the bicarb, as well as a decrease in base excess. And therefore, it's a metabolic acidosis. So recalling the causes, this could be a decay which would require like insulin and other causes could be renal failure or sepsis and the treatment is always correction of acidosis. So going to question number two. Same question, uh, like, I mean, I have the same questions for this. So what is the problem with the gases? What's the possible cause? And in this one, you have to figure out if it's compensated or uncompensated. Okay, start. Okay, so this case is hypoxia with fully compensated respiratory acidosis. So first of all, the patient is hypoxic. There is a normal pH, so it appears as if no acidosis or alkalosis is present. But look at the other parameters. They're abnormal. So there is a problem because the carbon dioxide is raised. So carbon dioxide obviously has been retained, indicating respiratory acidosis and bicarbonate is raised, indicating metabolic alkalosis. So the primary problem is there is increased carbon dioxide and raised bicarb is basically the compensating factor, indicating there is a renal compensation. So coming to the third question, here's the question. 
so your 10 seconds start now so this is a partially compensated metabolic acidosis there's also a decrease in bicarb and a decrease in base excess that means base deficit which indicates a metabolic acidosis but at the same time the carbon dioxide is low demonstrating a respiratory alkalosis so the value of the ph and the value of the bicarbonate match each other which means that both are showing acidosis so here the primary problem is metabolic acidosis and by compensation carbon dioxide is reduced by the patient's attempt to exhale out the carbon dioxide in the form of hyperventilation <clears throat> So as the pH has not returned to normal limits, the compensation is only partial. So coming to the last question of this video, here it is. So your time starts now. So this one was a little different because I wanted to show you guys how many different types of uh, ABG can exist. So this is a mixed respiratory and metabolic acidosis because here the pH is acidotic but it's matching both the bicarbonate and carbon dioxide. So both bicarbonate and carbon dioxide values are also acidotic. Also the base excess is negative 5 which is indicating metabolic acidosis or the acidosis component of this whole thing. So that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope I made the concept easy and understandable. With practice, I'm sure that all of you will be ABG experts in no time. Also, many of you would have noticed that I hadn't mentioned the complete list of causes of metabolic acidosis, especially important causes like diabetic ketoacidosis, sepsis and uremia. Uh, so that topic requires understanding anion gap because under metabolic acidosis, there is an extensive list of high anion gap metabolic acidosis and normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So in the next video, I will discuss anion gap and its types, which is also an essential part of the ABG. So thank you so much for watching. I hope all you wonderful people have an amazing day. And if you found this video useful, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel and follow me on my social media platforms where I share some really interesting medical content on a daily basis. So the links are given in the description box. I will see you in my next video.